Viva la Evolution. Hello everyone, it's Mike Levin. Friday, September 11th, 2015, at about 5.20 p.m. And uh, it was a work from home, code with Mike Friday. Gonna get back to those talking head videos. I can feel them coming because it gets to be all about the standalone Python functions. As if you're just programming a single Python function that takes in input parameters and spits out an output value. If you can do one of those simple functions, you can write Pipulate plugins. That's the way it works. And uh, I'm starting to really appreciate certain aspects of what I built that I don't think about a lot, uh, but there are several little touring machines within Pipulate. The left-right movement uh, within uh, the standard pipulation process, the sort of uh, sweeping movements of uh, kind of a read-write head across uh, cells that just happen to loop around to another row. That's uh, a lot like a touring machine. It just happens to be that the machine instruction is always to go left to right and then down and then left to right again. But I could even make it just as easily move left, stay in the same position, whatever. And that's only one of the two touring machines within Pipulate. The second one that was put in later is a pre-pipulation process, which itself has the ability to invoke Pipulate as many times as it likes, but not as deep as it likes. So Pipulate can invoke Pipulate, but you can't do unlimited nesting. It goes one deep. And what that creates is the ability to almost write sheet music of do, use Pipulate to do this, use Pipulate to do that. Carrying out different instructions like filling in uh, pre-populating tables, uh, or also known as uh, tabs in Google Sheets. So you can make new tables, you can populate them however you like, you can fill in with question marks and then make that tab pipulate so that as you initialize new client setups, for example, you also gather the initial data right on that uh, initialization. So you could even be figuring out what their pages are on a crawl, their top level pages, what each page appears to be targeting in terms of keywords, and then run SERPs to see if any of those pages are actually coming up the way they should be given that they're targeting those terms. So uh, creating processes where lists feed into lists and uh, items on that list trigger little bits of code to execute, a lot like a Turing machine. And uh, I figure I will use that to my advantage in turning this whole thing into an educational process. Uh, and, you know, here is how you can move notes around to make a player piano make some music. But if you want to orchestrate an entire mechanical band, you need another level of music. Uh, one that controls all the individual machines and can be uh, invoked as many times as you like, uh, last as long as you want. And so that's what I'm doing now, and it's really exciting work. It's essentially the way to formulatize, to, to bottle it uh, when it comes to SEO. And it's, I think, uh, the big missing piece because, you know, everyone who gets into SEO eventually finds their way to Conductor and Bright Edge for running SERP reports, the enterprise SEO platforms. But they uh, also find themselves, uh, find their way to like authority labs and web position for doing ad hoc SERP uh, reports. But it doesn't begin and end at SERPs. There's monitoring pages, seeing if recommendations have been implemented. Once implemented, monitoring to see if they get sent out of, get out of whack. And then compelling the whole SEO process forward, making sure you did copyright violation checks every once in a while, uh, you know, checking again, just n nudging you to make sure uh, to re-review re your schema.org vocabularies that are available in your industry because it will be improving and growing. And uh, all these little checklist items 
that are important for SEO, easy to forget, easy to let the months go by and to never think about actually doing them or doing them a second time after you did them the first time at, at setup, even reevaluating your keyword monitoring lists for position tracking. So anyway, Pipulate fills in all these little gaps. It can let you create your own difficulty scores by looking at the real search results, pulling back other people's numbers like domain authority or original Google page rank for what it's still worth. And uh, you could create your own difficulty score. And when a client asks you, what does that mean? You'll be able to tell them because you invented it. And it could be your own special formula held back that you don't have to contribute back up to the GitHub code base. But if you do, you get some notoriety. And hopefully that's how we create little pipulate ecosystem of all these little exciting functions to do this and that. And pretty soon it'll be a powerhouse suite of little SEO tools that you use every day and you use together according to a sort of orchestra. Well, thanks. Thanks for joining me. Hope to talk to you soon and don't forget to subscribe.